Thanks so much for taking the time, guys. We'll start off, I guess, with um, like sport has been something for you guys, obviously, that you've had a lot of time to in your life. Um, at what point did you start participating in sport and what other sports do you guys try? Um, well, when I was younger, I started in pretty much like any sport I could play in, uh, from like hockey, athletics, horse riding, um, hurling, all those kind of stuff. And then I think like I was really interested in athletics when my brother like started training when he was like, like really young. So like I used to see him going to training like as soon as I could go, I just started and it just kind of went on from there. <laughs> Similarly, yeah, I would have done like kind of every sport growing up, like would have started probably going down playing football at five or six and um, then to GA and then into into school then kind of yeah started doing athletics and um, dabbled in rugby and everything so kind of tried everything swimming um, and I kind of played I did athletics and played football up until I was probably 16 and then after that kind of just did athletics yeah okay what about you Ali? Yeah, so the same. Funny enough, we've all come from the same club. Actually, just quickly, the trips on this call, we're all from Greystones. We literally live in the same estate and all <laughs> kind of started out in Greystones when we were small. Me and Eva are a little bit older than Rochelle, but we would have started together when we were seven, you know. So, like, with the others, kind of played different sports as well. But athletics, I suppose, took up the main focus. Would have done swimming and bits of dancing and that kind of thing as well. Um, but athletics kind of then went on to be the only one. And what kind of what kind of age did you guys decide that athletics was going to be a priority? Because I think sometimes um, younger athletes, like when particularly when they get into secondary school, aren't sure what sports to keep up or how many are feasible. And then sometimes parents might kind of pressure a child into to choosing one sport over the others. Um, you know, it's good to hear that people do a range of sports and. You know, sometimes if you're in one sport for too long, like you can kind of fall out of love with it. So at what point did you choose athletics? Yeah, no, I completely agree with you. I think like it is so good to to do all different sports, just in terms of like individual sports, team sports, um, just to get kind of the full rounded picture. And I suppose for social reasons as well and for developing different skills. So I would have done like hockey in school in secondary school from first to fourth year I did athletics and I did like football up until 16 so I think it was fourth year fifth year when I decided that I was just going to do running because I suppose at that point I had found that like I was getting a bit too tired and I suppose as well with academics as well you were trying to you're going into fifth year so you couldn't really do all three anymore which mm -hmm. it was a tough decision but um I'm glad I stuck with with running particularly Neve was good at kind of all sports you know if you're kind of good across the board I think obviously then you actually honestly you'll come to a decision where you have to a time where you have to make a decision whereas I think for me it was more the athletics helped all the other sports like would have had to play basketball and things and in terms of running you're always you know the fittest or the fastest person on the team not necessarily the most skilled yeah. but you know in a kind of way I was probably having more success in athletics that kind of led me to make that decision to decide on athletics you know but I think it definitely gives you a great foundation for all sports even if you don't end up choosing athletics ultimately I think it gives you a good foundation for all teams as well definitely. Would you say like did it was it always you say your favorite sport or it just was in later life that you then kind of decided that this was the one that you you wanted to stick with? I think for me it was definitely always my favorite um, and I suppose just where I had the most friends there and probably spent the most time doing it that could have been why you know as many times a week and um, it probably just fitted the majority I think yeah yeah I think I was the same as you like I like obviously athletics was like the main focus like all the way through secondary school so then but then I also had like horse riding and hockey on the side but then it just got to the stage that like as Neve said, in like fourth year or fifth year where you actually couldn't keep all three up and then you just had to decide which one like was your favourite or whatever and then you just went straight for the athletics. So, With obviously like there's a lot of younger girls dropping out of sport and you know 13, 14 I think is, is the age that most people are dropping out and then it continues like we're saying exam years and you know people, some people stick it out leaving cert and then 
that's that's when they drop off or they manage to stick at it through college and then they finish like obviously like life does impact what people are doing um what kept you in sport and when did you start to notice that, that say girls or your peers weren't participating in sport anymore any of the kind of main transition point you know, kind of say primary school into secondary school like that'll be one major kind of turning point where if there was a focus in the school on a particular sport um maybe that isn't athletics you know that was hockey or your football or whatever it was and then again i suppose going kind of into later the later academic years where that became the focus or even on to college a lot of people would have dropped out coming into college definitely as well i think where it comes into like how do we kind of stay in it i know kind of for myself and probably for ellie as well we were the same age group and we were lucky that in our club we had a lot of um, people similar ages to us boys mm-hmm. and girls and um, so it became like you know quite a social thing for us as well like we did really look forward to going training and um, from the legs point of view but also you know meeting our friends and our club was based in Wicklow and what they do there which can be quite good is as well they link in with other clubs in the area like so we would have known a lot of other teenagers from different clubs and gone on like weekends away or trips away or training days and I think that was a good thing to kind of keep teenagers interested in the sport and the social side as well like we would do kind of fun activities so you might have your training in the morning and then like there'd be like fun or games after or something Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah I think definitely the social aspect for teenagers if they're enjoying it like they will stick at it um and I know Claire mentioned like you know meeting boys and stuff like depending on what school you're in (laughs) you can be a big day out or whatever yeah Um, but like no it is like it is really I think good when there's when there's an atmosphere in a club where um you know whether they're children or teenagers or, or, or at whatever age that there is a social outlet and I think when you are on a sports team you usually find people that are kind of similar to you so like yeah, yeah. You know, in different sports depending on the level of dedication um, you're going to find people with, with kind of similar mindsets and uh, interests and that type of thing that you don't necessarily get I think from people at, whether it's at work or at school like so what did it look like after uh, school and going into college like what were your experiences like there and um, juggling training and your education I suppose the the academic or the profession that we want to go in probably did form the, you know our decisions mainly but I think that is a massive part for all of us I know just speaking for myself went to UCD you know chose UCD based on the course that I was going to do but also a lot to do with athletics and kind of the kind of setup that they had there and you know applying for scholarship and things so it definitely had a, a massive role there and then in terms of I suppose keeping us in it while we were there athletics was a huge part of it and even a huge part of like, that kind of social aspect again you know a lot of the friend groups um, would have been from the athletic club as well as from you know your class group as well and depending on the course you're doing that could be a huge part I suppose I was lucky in a small course but if you're in any of the kind of bigger academic courses there where you know you mightn't actually meet a lot of people there it's harder to meet people the clubs and things are a brilliant way to meet people because like Neva was saying you'd have you know your weekend nights out whatever it is lead up to competitions and then it's definitely a great way to make friends and that keeps you in, in the sport even more so there I think as well. I think also with the like in UCD like I was the same as Ali like I picked UCD because of like obviously the sporting background and then also just with the facilities, like obviously there's no excuse not to stay in sport nearly when you are in a place like UCD where there's like you walk outside your lecture hall and like you're looking straight at the uh, sports fil- facilities or like the big swimming pool or whatever. So like there's not really an excuse not to, do you know. Me, were you, you were abroad for college? Yeah, so yeah, a little bit different. Um, so I did. I went abroad. So I went to America and ran there um, on scholarship. And I suppose, yeah, like the girl said, um, my degree or my chosen profession did play into kind of which college I did choose because um, I work now as a dietitian. So not every university or college uh, offers that course. So uh, that played a big part in which one I chose. Um, and. Yeah, as well, at that age, I kind of wanted to stay in a city, so maybe didn't go down to traditional, you know, colleges that Irish people had gone Mm -hmm. to previously. Um, 
So I went and studied in Atlanta at Georgia State. Um, so I was there for four years undergrad and stayed on for an extra year to do a master's. But yeah, as the girl said, I suppose the reason I stayed in it was I, I was invested in like in the program there. I suppose I dropped off of it when I finished college and came back. I found it hard then to stay in the sport. Um, just from going from such an intense environment with like lunch and I moved home and yeah I just found it hard then to stay in the sport then for I would say a few years and it's only recently really that I've um, started back. That's interesting actually I'm you know moving away from the kind of routine I guess that you have in college and I'm I guess you know leaving kind of uh, something that can be quite structured can be difficult Uh, it's interesting that you mentioned that what was it like to adjust, I guess, going back to Ireland and um, settling back in? Yeah, like it, it was definitely different. And I suppose at the time I was waiting for my qualification um, to be like ratified here. And um, so I was working part time um, at the time in another job and I had returned to my club to do a few sessions, which was brilliant at the time um, to kind of keep me in the sport. But I just found it hard to keep to uh, routine and to get consistent training. And then I suppose on the back of that, then when I went racing, I just wasn't really, um, I suppose, racing as much or to the ability that I thought I should be. So then I kind of lost interest in it. Um, so, yeah, I kind of dabbled. I'd trained for a little while and then I'd kind of dabble out of it a bit. Um, and it's actually kind of, I feel like I'm someone that, I need a routine so then once I I got my job and I have a bit more structure now I'm actually able to to get back training again and I joined in with a group here I live in town now so I, I joined in with a group in the and doing sessions so that has really helped with getting consistent training over kind of the last year or two. I think it is interesting that you kind of mentioned that because it's a point to people's lives where they can kind of sometimes take a step back um yeah i guess the others has there ever been a point where you've kind of considered leaving the sport or you haven't doubted it at at, at any point thus far (laughs) i'm trying to think after straight away after qualifying i moved to the uk for a year i suppose that's the only time just that it was in kind of like a really funny little obscure town (laughs) in england and like that like he was saying, I found it hard to find structure, even hard to find a club. I think it, did, it took me a while. Mm-hmm. I was doing everything by myself. I think I was always going to kind of stick with it, but my coach would have been programming from Ireland and kind of sending them across. And I was always doing the program. Definitely in terms of motivation and things, don't, you know, it wasn't at the same level and you definitely start to question it a little bit. You know, you're not enjoying it. There's no so respect yeah. to it. Just kind of going out and getting it done. and you're getting no feedback either from, you know, you're just going out, you and your watch and horrible days, you know, you're just, yeah, definitely. That would have been a time where I would have questioned it. But other than that, no, I suppose it's just so ingrained and has just been, we've been doing it for whatever, 20 years. So just, it's just so normal. I think without it, it would just feel strange. How did you guys find support when you were in college and in ed- in education, like well, actually in secondary school as well to, to do sports? Yeah. Well, in my school anyway, um, one of my teachers was like very supportive about it she was actually like an athlete herself and she was like um like I think at one stage she was like aiming to go to the Olympics kind of thing so like he knew exactly and then she kind of like helped me through it the whole time and like give me tips and stuff like that even through school and um yeah I've never found that when I was going through school that there was a lack of support there was almost like too much support you know like anytime you yeah. come back from competition they'd be there like oh how do you and like sometimes if you didn't do well you're kind of just like oh god here they come you know <laughs> the kind of way like they never really forget so I know for me I've and like I've always had so much support through school I Myself think and um, would say, yeah yeah like we kind of there was a I suppose sports coordinator in our school and uh-huh. um, they were quite good about encouraging people to participate um, and I suppose when we would have started school, Ellie, um, I think they may may have been kind of new to the whole cross country and going to yeah. like, you know, the East Lancers and the Lancers was kind of a new thing. Um, so I know it was kind of a learning curve for us and, you know, probably for them as well. So I remember like one time going to like the DCU Invitational Cross Country mm-hmm. um, yeah. and, you know, the way like you kind of arrive like an hour before your event, you know, see the course, maybe jog the course. 
Um, and I suppose we were only like in first year, um, but I just remember we arrived like at the time, like I think they thought, oh, you just arrive at that time mm-hmm. that the race starts. <laughs> So like me and my friend had to run to the start line and continue yeah. the race. So it was kind of a learning curve. But by by sixth year, we we had it under control. Yeah, Neve, I guess you'll probably have an insight to this. I wanted to touch a bit on nutrition. Um, it's yeah. obviously important in sport, and I think something that you learn more about as you get older. Where did you guys learn about nutrition, and uh, what kind of support have you had over your career? probably in secondary school was maybe the first time I had kind of met or or heard from a dietitian or Mm -hmm. um we probably had had I probably had information before that maybe through coaches and things um about like you know eating for performance and what you should eat before a race or what you should be before training and that kind of thing but I suppose um formally like I think through like football at the time the team had got a dietitian and I think that's kind of where it sparked my interest professionally kind of in in that obviously at that time I was probably like 15 so I wasn't really thinking about a profession but I was like oh that's kind of interesting um so I think that's when I first kind of would have got formal I suppose introduction to to that kind of side of sports performance and eating and nutrition and um, and then I I suppose going after that then like yeah I think it's generally through through coaches and then I would have done home ec in school and um, so yeah. I would have kind of touched on nutrition and um, I think um I don't know for personally I think that was a great subject to do in school and I think you know it, every teenager would benefit from doing home ec just in terms of learning about nutrition and cooking um, as well. Um, and then in college, yeah, we obviously studied um, dietetics and um, I suppose I work more clinically in hospitals, so I wouldn't uh, consider myself any expert on sports nutrition or anything like that. I feel like I do fine for myself, but uh, in terms of like emerging research and things like mm-hmm. that, I definitely i am not the expert, uh, but I definitely am interested in it and um, I think it is an area that can, you know, it definitely needs a bit more focus uh, on those younger years growing up because um, I suppose it's just an area that if you, people maybe aren't as informed as, as maybe they should be. Yeah. Um, especially for like teenagers and stuff. There's a lot of, um, lots of different media and mediums of information and it's hard to know kind of where to get your information from at that age um, and there's a lot of like influence on on your information yeah it, it can definitely be I think something that can be confusing for a lot of people i um, and I think from you know personal experiences like speaking to different people I often find that girls tend to be a bit more confused about it than guys do. Um, I don't know what the reasoning is if, if guys just dive into it a bit deeper, but I think sometimes girls can be overwhelmed by the information. And then, like you're saying, there's lots of influencing factors. Um, Ellie, what about you? Like, when, when did you start to learn about nutrition and, and understanding it more? Yeah, I definitely think like it's a bit of a minefield. Even now, I still, you know, with kind of like a, as much as I've looked up and been to, you know, sports nutritionists and that, I still find it difficult, you know, to get it right. I think, especially what you're saying there about women in sport, in particular younger girls, I think it is really, really difficult because even. Mm-hmm in a joking way, say we would eat a huge amount and people say outside the sport might be saying, oh my God, you eat like a horse or how do you eat that much? Yeah. You know, that kind of way. But I think if anything, uh, a big risk on all that kind of under, under fueling and I definitely would have suffered with that kind of only, you know, becoming anemic and things like that just because I don't know if we're seeing the amount of work we were doing and how much we actually needed to take in, you know, unintentionally. Um, I think it's a really, really easy thing to do. Um, and particularly with I suppose females in sport and that kind of diet culture mm-hmm. and that you know it's kind of funny to be seen to be eating these massive meals and things um, but I, I still find it difficult genuinely and we you know we've gone to sports nutritionists and I've gotten all this information and even kind of going through that information I find it quite tough um, to figure out you know what you need to eat when you need to eat it and a lot of it is kind of trial and error and I've definitely mm-hmm. Um, learned you know through trial and error and what works I suppose pre-competition and things and um, sticking with what works and not changing things up too much keeping it as simple as possible but 
I could definitely deal with learning a whole lot more as well. <laughs> Need to sit a PhD yeah. in it or something. <laughs> and I think that's yeah. like what you said just there, Ellie, like, and as it kind of changes, like at that age, as we mentioned before, most of us were kind of doing, you know, three sports or at, yeah. at you know, going through your puberty years. And then you've got on top of that, all your schoolwork, you're growing like as well mm-hmm. at the same time. Yeah. So like your like nutritional needs are just you know crazy high and and as Ellie said you know maybe someone else of that age is not doing as much exercise as you and it can be hard in that situation because if you are you know conscious and your lunch is much bigger than someone else's like it shouldn't be some you know I think it's just more about education around uh fueling your body and um, for you know your demands individually um and as an individual person not as a whole group yeah no it's it's interesting some of the points you made uh, they are some of the questions that were coming up um <laughs> i know that sarah lavin uh was it was mentioned in an article recently about you know under eating and, and the impact um you know it can have on performance and that and that's kind of one of the questions that we were going to ask is like okay ali you've mentioned that you've experienced it and and some of the things is you know like you're saying comparisons to what are other people eating and you know, sometimes there can be comparisons in like societal pressures that girls don't be eating as much and, you know, you make sure to feed up the growing boys, but it doesn't always happen in the same way with girls. Um, what, what kind of have you experienced, I guess, um, over the years and, and how have you kind of learned to overcome that and say, well, actually, no, this is what I need and, you know, <laughs> let me off like this. This is what I have to do to, to perform. See, for some of it was literally learning the hard way, like that completely under feeling, I suppose. I think it was first year college, so I would have been commuting in and out and probably training, you know, training obviously there, then taking an hour and a half or whatever to get home and just not even thinking, oh, it might be an idea to, you know, save some food or have it on the bus home. And then, you know, getting injured, getting anemia, you know, underperforming because of all those things. And then, you know, speaking with doctor or nutritionist, and figuring out, okay, maybe this is where, you know, this is where the issue is. Um, you're going to have to try and feel more. And then by doing it, then you see the results. You're hopefully not getting injured. You know, you're getting fitter and stronger. And that's that's the way I would have found out anyway. <laughs> the hard way, probably. Yeah, no, I'd be kind of similar to Ali. Like, um, like having an injury last year and stuff, like a stress fracture. Like, you'd have to, when I went to a doctor, I learned a lot about, like, you know, vitamin D and that kind of thing. And, and then just going to nutritionist and like getting the views and stuff like that. But then it is like, there's still so much more to learn about it. Like I still feel at times it can be very overwhelming kind of thing. Um, so I think there is still so much more that I don't know about nutrition and that I'm just willing to learn about it, you know, that kind of way. But definitely I think learning the hard way is always what happens. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, know it, it can be difficult I think and um obviously there is pressures for men as well and, and you know boys and girls alike um there has been obviously a lot of research done around um say body image it, it, within athletes and say some of the studies looked at you know pressures feeling like you have to look pretty or you know worries of becoming too muscular and then obviously eating disorders as well um what have you kind of experienced over the, over your careers and over different people that you've met, what has been how, what have been your experiences of body image and how have you come to where you are today? Yeah, I suppose to kind of answer that, I would say I kind of probably noticed it most um, when I went to college um, and just in America, like obviously there could be like hundreds of people at races and within my own team, there could be 10 to 15 people on the team. And I suppose just kind of thinking back on, on my experience, like there would have been athletes at the time um, that um, would have got injuries um, and maybe had um, disordered eating um, as well and would have um, had to seek help for those things. Um, so it's definitely something that is prevalent in the sport and I suppose, yeah, the the causes, I suppose it, it's quite complicated. Like, I think, as you mentioned, there's like different kind of issues that, that can arise, um, body image and um, in terms of performance, thinking that they, being a lighter weight um, 
could enhance the performance and thinking of your race weight and that kind of thing. So I, I definitely would have been exposed to it in college with, with other athletes. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I suppose for myself, because I was studying it, um, I don't know if that was a way for me to kind of get more knowledge and, and try to make sure I was fueling myself. I'm sure many times I wasn't doing it correctly myself as well, you know, um, just trying to be prepared as well, like if you're on the road and that kind of thing. As Ellie mentioned, sometimes I think at that point I wasn't as prepared um, either. I know there's been a number of athletes have come out, um, you know, high performing athletes that have come out and said that they have felt, you know, sometimes pressures from, for, from coaches to say that, you know, you should be X weight and, and that type of thing. Um, you know, what is it like? Like, I, I've... I've heard that from within athletics. Obviously, it happens in other sports as well. Um, and there's people that have, you know, had injuries that are career ending or, you know, just, just can no longer handle it. Like, it's just not the right way to go about it. Um, what have you guys kind of met within the community? Yeah, I think, I suppose, athletes, I suppose, by their nature, particularly runners, we can be quite, you know, obsessive and we're looking for these tiny margins, details and things, I suppose, that are going to enhance our performance or whatever it is so definitely I've experienced you know people close to us who just mention certain comments you know in passing that might indicate that they're you know they are under fueling or they're you know they'll skip a certain amount of food or I think Neve mentioned it there about being a certain race weight and I remember never understanding you know what that kind of meant but oh yeah I only race at this weight you know, even though obviously it's an event where you don't need a weigh in, it's not like, I don't know, other sports where you have to be a weight. Well, I suppose they correlated their performance with their weight when they race well. And um, that's definitely something that's just kind of been mentioned in passing. You know, that might, yeah, just imply that people are thinking that way and thinking their, their physique or their weight is going to determine how well or how badly they're going to do. Luckily, as well, I've never experienced, you know, those thoughts are never correlated the two myself which is good but definitely within college and uh, there's a huge there's definitely huge um pressure to be you know not sorry i'm not saying that i experienced it but some people feel that there is pressure to be a certain um physique a sh certain shape you know we're going around in crop tops and shorts and yeah photos online you know so i can understand how people will get to that stage or how they'd feel that a certain weight would make them better make them run faster but then logically, when you think it through, well, another thing actually is that I suppose sometimes when people go down to a certain weight, and I think, you know, when they're being uber cautious and obsessive about things, there probably is a certain time where maybe their performance does go up. But then ultimately what happens is you come down, the other end of it comes down, uh, career ending injuries and, you know, they entirely leave the sport. But yes, yeah, definitely a really fine line to thread. I think also like it's an interesting thing because like the athletics community in Ireland is so small so I think even yeah. if like we haven't like I haven't thankfully um gone through anything like that myself or anything but I think that we all have been exposed to it nearly or know someone who has do you know that kind of way just because the athletics yeah. community is so small so mm -hmm. in the last like 10 or 20 years there's been a bit of a shift I think uh, around you know, more accepting of girls going to the gym and being stronger and um, a, a bit of a shift towards women being strong as opposed to being skinny. Um, sometimes women do still fear like lifting weights is going to make them, um, you know, very muscular and completely change their body composition. Um, what are your thoughts on this as an athlete? That's definitely something and I, I work as a physio myself and even outside the athletic community, you know, if I'm giving exercises to people, um, they'll say that Even the other day one of my friends I think I post up a video doing squats or something like that and she just kind of said I don't understand how are you so how how'd you not put on so much muscle I'd be worried about doing that kind of thing and putting on muscle and it's kind of just explaining to them how difficult it is to put on muscle I suppose and how much work you need to be doing and how much food you need to be eating to kind mm -hmm. of you know you'd have to consciously be making an effort to do that to get that you know to body build essentially um i think yeah it takes a long time to to change your physique or anything like that but definitely i say there's a little bit of a probably a lack of education around that for for everyone but yeah for females 
that's a certain concern mm-hmm. that they're afraid of getting bulky or muscly or anything like that um well like I've found like say in secondary school like going to the gym wasn't really like a big thing for girls but I think as like I've moved on into college I think everybody now as you said like it's become nearly trendy to be mm-hmm. like strong you know that kind of way so like I think the amount of women now that are in the gym is has changed so much and there's so many so like I don't think there's any pressure at the minute like I'd say back in secondary school maybe like I would have found like I would have been like oh I don't want to be too muscly or anything like that but I think now everybody wants to be strong and wants to just put on muscle and stuff like that so there has been a shift and I think for the better yeah that more people are interested in in going to the gym and that kind of thing and there's no any stigma for women like they can go to the gym if they want and they can lift weights and maybe before um people would have kind of had a judgment about that but I think yeah as as Rochelle and Ellie said thankfully now I don't think um well for myself anyway I don't feel the pressure um of that and I think as well just thinking of um running and running efficiency and injury prevention like um I find the gym very good another thing that we've had is like sometimes people think that you can't be like a girly girl and a sporty girl together what would you be your opinions on that statement um (laughs) well I know like I was always like a sporty girl anyway um but I don't know I think like as you said like if like it's everybody's not aiming for that super skinny model look anymore I think I think even girly girls are trying to get look strong that kind of thing you know so but I guess I guess it's from a perspective of like do you think that people could be interested in sport but also interested in like fashion and makeup and clothes and that type of thing because I think sometimes girls that are interested in sport are kind of written off as tomboys and you know people think that you know just because you know like you spend a lot of time in gear like yeah 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 Yeah, no I I agree with you and I think yeah like growing up I definitely would have considered myself like a tomboy like I had an older brother and I just kind of wanted to be like him and like playing football and wearing all different soccer jerseys um so I definitely was out of the dresses into the jerseys um as quick as possible um but I think yeah like now things are kind of kind of changed and hopefully and you know like even in terms of like um sports brands like like there's you know they've got like a lot of different options for sporty clothes and you can be fashionable in your sporty clothes um now so like I think you definitely can be a girly girl and and sporty at the same time absolutely yeah what do you think I like the same yeah, I literally I was gonna say the same as Neve and that I suppose when we grew up, definitely even in terms of sports gear and things, you know, you'd be in the maybe in your day shorts, you know, wearing them to a race and your big high tech spikes, you know, definitely wasn't girly or attractive in any shape yeah. or form. But now, you know, some of the things you'd nearly wear the stuff out. It's so nice that they've you know, they've really ramped it up and you can look really nice and sometimes I feel like to give yourself confidence in that sometimes you'll even you know you might do your hair do your makeup for race day and things so I think you get that kind of dual aspect of you're obviously definitely sporty but you're feeling you know you're feeling pretty you're you're feeling like you've put in an effort and um, looks wise as well you know that kind of way and it one feeds into the other I suppose a little bit so I suppose that's changed a little bit yeah and you like see people with like their nails done and like yeah, maybe earrings yeah. in or yeah as Ellie said like the braids like I think there's like a nice movement of, of like bringing a bit of fashion into sport as well. Mm. That's yeah. awesome. The stuff that you can like, get now is like, yeah, you're right. It's so nice. And obviously like people so in, the nice. last, <laughs> in the last like, 10 years, I think have moved towards just like, they're not actually participating in sport, but they're wearing like, you know, that's it. It's really stylish yeah. Yeah. yet wear basically all the time. Yeah. Um, what would your advice be to younger athletes that are like considering dropping out of sport? Um, and then I guess also on the, on the topic of, of body image, like what would your advice be in, in relation to like them trying to keep their confidence and, and you know, retain their love of sport? Ooh, hard one. Sorry, I know I've given you loads of it. It's doing really well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's just like to think of, um, well, obviously you have to be doing something that you enjoy and that's the most important. And um, so 
choose in a sport that you enjoy or whatever exercise you do enjoy and um, whether it be a sport or a dance or whatever it might be um, it's important that you enjoy it and that like because you're not going to do it if you if you don't enjoy it and then just to think of like the the benefits in terms of like yeah socially and um, mental health and and in terms of health as well like the health benefits of doing sport and just um, the amount of doors and opportunities it opens up to you as well and um, just being able to like travel around Ireland even is like you get to see so much of the country definitely I don't think I would have been in some counties if I uh, yeah. didn't run cross country um, mm-hmm. and like then as you get older maybe you'll be traveling abroad and you just get to meet so many different people um, and it's just like great crack like as well like I think you- like I would like advise um, someone just like don't be scared to be different because I like I know in my group of friends um, like I'd be the only person that would run or even be sporty but I think that as long as you do what you love like they're going to respect you for it and like it won't matter you know. Mm -hmm. Ali what about you? Yeah, you know, exactly that. And just that, I spoke exactly what two girls said, sorry, but that also it gives you, it does give you so many skills as well, you know, that you can that transfer across the board. You know what I mean? You're, I suppose, your ability to kind of work hard, whatever it is, work towards a goal, uh, you know, make sacrifices. And I feel like if nothing else in, say, in job interviews or in life in general, you can mm-hmm. pull those skills uh, to the fore, definitely. Um, and it's, you know, like a bit cliched or whatever to say, but it's definitely true. You can use a lot of the skills you've taken from athletics um, and use them across the board, definitely. Yeah, no, even the, like what we were saying earlier about, you know, people in, a, in you know, doing well in education um, tend to be people that are involved in sport as well, you know, or, or at least having something that they're interested in. Because I think there's, like, like you're saying, the skills, there's so much to learn in like time management, communication, and like particularly on a sports team, like you have to kind of be able to, you know, work with other people and you might like everybody that you're working with or yeah. you might, you know, always agree with the coaches or, you know, say if you're somebody that you kind of find yourself on the bench sometimes, like you might actually just have to go to the coach and be like, here, can I have can I have a chance or, or whatever it is. Like yeah. there's just so much I think that you do like learn from sports. Um, like what like one that I would think like majorly is just like discipline and time management and mm-hmm. yeah. like what most employers are really looking for when it like that you're you know you're able to work as part of a team you, you know you kind of follow the rules and, and you're also yeah. like things done on a timeline um with the question in relation to body image like what would your advice be to those girls that that might be a bit self-conscious and you know starting to worry a little bit and, and like it probably typically starts to happen, I suppose, when they're 12 or 13. And, um, you know, I think younger children mightn't be as, as worried about what people think. But when people, you know, are becoming teenagers, they, they start to think about it a little bit more. Leading on from what uh, Michelle said, just kind of, I suppose, try to, I suppose, respect the difference and kind of really like celebrate the difference. But that is a really hard thing to do. I think when you're that age, you want to be the exact same. We all kind of conform and we want to be looking, wear the same things, you know. But I suppose it's maybe trying to take a little step back and say, no, it doesn't suit me to be that shape or so. Maybe I'm not to be, you know, in that kind of suit yourself and be a bit brave, maybe a bold to say, not follow everyone else, the status quo and kind of, yeah, appreciate that you're different which is definitely harder yeah. <laughs> harder to do <laughs> than it sounds, definitely. Because I suppose we're all a little bit more like sheep at that age. You know, when you just, you don't want to kind of put your head up above the parapet or whatever. You just want to stay below. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you're definitely right with that. Like everybody's, you know, wearing the same clothes and, you know, trying yeah. to trying to be as similar as possible. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think definitely people that are, yeah, kind of under junior cert are, you know, as far as transition year. Um, I think maybe they'll grow into themselves a little bit more in the uh, you know, later years of school. And then obviously when you when you go into college, I think you just meet so many different people from different backgrounds. I think by the time you get into college, you have to be yeah. independent. Um, girls, what do you think on that that kind of topic? Yeah, I agree um, with what you said there. Like, I think, it, as you said, at that age, you know, and everyone's developing at different stages at that age of 12 and 13. So it is kind of a challenging time um, for, for like those young girls. Um, so it's yeah just as much as you can trying to 
as Ellie said, embrace the, the changes and that, you know, you might be changing a bit faster or maybe a bit slower than, than your friends and your peers. And that's okay. Like, cause we all are different. And mm-hmm. um, so just to, you know, not to, to panic and, um, you know, as you said, once you get then to kind of fourth year and fifth year, that's kind of when maybe most of those changes maybe have happened and, and you're all kind of similar again so it's just like a lot of change for them to to kind of handle at once and just to to try and um focus on yourself and and that you might might be different to your friends yeah like don't be afraid to stand out (laughs) yeah yeah, Yeah. i think you you summarized it pretty well with with that one um thanks so much guys for taking the time really appreciate it perfect thank you thank you so much thanks so much for having us thank you see you guys Bye. bye